Welcome into Tennessee Titans today. I am Tom Downey, a fun show on tap for you. We're taking a look at the top round one Titans draft targets. They're picking number 11 overall, which really sets up Tennessee in a good position to land a top player at a massive position of need this year. The year was a disappointment, make no mistake, but an early round pick certainly helps out Tennessee. A brief look here at their team needs. You know, you could look at a cornerback back since I'm worried about Caleb Farley wide receiver still an area of need but the main focus is in no particular order uh, offensive tackle offensive guard offensive line pretty big area of focal point I think there's a very good chance Tennessee ends up in a position to land one of the top offensive linemen in this year's class here's the Early team needs before Tennessee. Uh, you got to figure Houston, Indy are going to go quarterbacks. You might see another QB, maybe to Carolina, maybe to Seattle, the Lions mix in there. The teams you're worried about taking offensive line before you. The Bears are not going to. I think they're going to go Will Anderson, Jalen Court, unless they trade way down, which could change things there. Uh, the Raiders stand out, but Falcons probably won't. They'll probably go defense. Eagles won't. Maybe Indy shocks you. But you are in great position to land an offensive lineman. Several names we'll get to, but if you want even more Titans NFL draft coverage this offseason, like the video for me right now. Very simple and helps the bosses that this is what you guys want. All right, my first first round target is Paris Johnson, the offensive tackle out of Ohio State. There will not be, I don't think, a 100% consensus on who is the best offensive lineman this year. I think the majority, especially depending on where you put the guy we'll get to at number two, position-wise, Paris Johnson will be number one. The Ohio State offensive tackle had been in plenty of first-round mock drafts before the year began, but it was always he's going from right side to left tackle. If he takes a step forward, he could be a very well top 15 pick. It's exactly what happened. Mel Kuyper mocked Paris Johnson to Tennessee. It makes a lot of sense. I am unconvinced Taylor Lewan will return to Tennessee given his age, injury, cap hit, etc., Johnson makes sense. Here's what Mel Kuyper had to say. And I think Mel, who isn't always right, none of us are in this business, I think he pretty much nailed Johnson here. Long-time left tackle to honest, played just 20 games over the past three years, could be an offseason cap casualty. There might be an opening on the left side, which I think there will be, or you need one on the right side, either way, for Tennessee. Uh, Johnson played guard in the Buckeyes in 2021, moved to left tackle in 2022, and he was tremendous. He will be a plug-and-play starter in the top 15 picks. The best part of this is you never have to play Dennis Daly again. Tennessee, I know, was injured and desperate and banged up and just decimated on the offensive line. Dennis Daly is a bum. He should not be playing and starting games in the NFL. We can look at uh, PFF for Paris Johnson because nobody does offensive line grades uh, outside of like PFF for college. So we give you what we have available. We graded out pretty well, 83.1 offensive grade. Again, the math has never made sense to me of how it's 80.9, 77.9 equals 83. That's not how math works, but, uh, you know, it's all a fluke, I guess, in the end. He's a consensus first-round prospect. He'd be a great fit. So do you think Tennessee should draft an offensive tackle with their first pick? Why for yes and for no? This is the pinned comment on today's video, so make sure you check it out there. Go vote. Why for yes and for no? And today's show is made possible by Magic Spoon Cereal. One of the best parts of being a kid growing up, right, was having the delicious cereal in the morning. I loved it, right? And then I gave it up because I realized that that cereal wasn't good for you. It was full of sugar and junk and stuff you should not eat. But Magic Spoon is cereal reinvented. I start every day with a bowl of Magic Spoon. It tastes amazing, and honestly, it's too good to be true. Magic Spoon tastes exactly like regular cereal from your child, but it's super nutritious with 13 to 14 grams of protein and zero grams of sugar. It comes in delicious flavors such as cocoa, fruity, frosted, peanut butter. Those last two are my favorite, by the way. And has only 140 calories per serving. It's keto-friendly, grain-free, gluten-free, and soy-free. I love Magic Spoon because it tastes great, and it's good for you. I'm never going back to regular cereal. Start your new year off right with Magic Spoon. 
Use the QR code on screen or go to magicspoon.com slash chat and use our code chat, C-H-A-T, for $5 off your own personalized Magic Spoon variety pack and stay on track of these new, of your New Year's resolutions. That's magicspoon.com slash chat and or scan the QR code on screen. It's that one. Right there, nice and easy for you. The link's in the comments, magicspoon.com slash chat. The promo code also in there. Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, back with 100% happiness guarantee. If you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money. No questions asked. Next up is Peter Skaronsky, the offensive tackle out of Northwestern. I think from a pure football player perspective, Skaronsky is better than Paris Johnson. He is a Great production, or at least, I guess, limiting opposing production uh, at Northwestern. But to a more extreme version of the Rashawn Slater conversation, there are size concerns. Peter Skaronsky has stubby arms, which leads to various problems. If if the pen, defenders get up in, in your face, get up in your chest, you're in trouble. Can't recover. Leads to some strength, some power, some anchor stuff concerns there. But he's a great football player. 6'4", 315, the arm length might not be 32 inches. That's most teams will not have that as an offensive tackle. So there will be plenty who say he should go play guard a la Quentin Nelson, Zach Martin, and he might be that type of really just great offensive lineman. Great PFF numbers. I love Skaronsky. If he's there at number 11, especially if Paris Johnson's gone, it is a sprint to the podium Make the pick selection unless you add like three different offensive linemen. I think you could play. I, I try him at tackle first, but feeling that, he can definitely plug and play anywhere at guard for you. The then fallback option at, at offensive tackle is Broderick Jones, the Georgia offensive tackle. He is not a bad prospect. You could do a lot worse than taking him at number 11 overall, and he's solid. But I do think he's the number three offensive tackle in this class. There's kind of a tier gap there. He'll go in the first round. Uh, he should be a starter for the NFL in the NFL for several years to come. He's played left side, right side, which I do think helps a team like Tennessee. If you keep Taylor to one, you can plug him in on the right side. Quality numbers uh, at Georgia this year certainly benefited from, you know, also to Peter Skronsky or, and, or uh, Paris Johnson. But, hey, that, their teams were awesome. Uh, so you got plenty of options along the offensive line. It certainly makes sense to pursue one of those in the event you are still, as I think you will be, looking for offensive line help. So pick one of them to take. Let's say all three are on the board in round one. Who are you taking? PJ for Paris Johnson. P.S. for Peter Skronsky, or you can type in B.J. for Broderick Jones. Let us know in the comment section. And remember, folks, to make sure you are subscribed because we will have you covered with various NFL draft news, rumors, draft meetings, prospects, etc. We got you guys covered here on Tennessee Titans today. Number four, how about wide receiver Jordan Addison? Uh, you could mix in a Quinton Johnston here if you wanted to, but I would wonder if Addison brings you some stuff you don't really have right now on this offense at wide receiver. His numbers actually did dip a little bit this past year. Leaving Pitt, going to USC uh, was still really freaking good, so you know that would help you. I think you have one locked and loaded piece at wide receiver. That's Traylon Burks. Robert Woods, prime cut candidate. You can let Kyle Phillips can be your slot still. Nick Westbrook, Akina, Racy McMath could be brought back. I still think you're looking for at least a number two, if not more. We all said last year, got to get more receiver help. Got to get more receiver help. And then they traded away A.J. Brown and drafted a receiver. So you still kind of need more receiver help, especially once I assume Woods ends up being gone. So receiver round one, I, I could get on board there. Joey Porter Jr., yes, the son of the Steelers' legendary linebacker Joey Porter, is a top cornerback prospect in this year's class out of Penn State, which certainly makes sense there. No interceptions this past year, but teams didn't target him that much. He has the size and traits that NFL teams will covet there. 11 pass breakups. I think you can make a real argument, whether it's Joey Porter Jr., Christian Gonzalez, uh, Devin Witherspoon, there will probably be some who like, I love Cam Smith, I love Keely Ringo, I love uh, Emmanuel Forbes or Dante Banks. It's a great cornerback prospect class, and the, you might have your pick of all of them at number 11 because it's not quite like the Patrick Sertan, J.C. Horn class, which 
Fortunately, I don't trust Caleb Farley because I don't think he can stay healthy, which terrifies me. But your defense was terrible in pass coverage there. I think Roger McCreary's a piece. I'm hopeful Christian Fulton kind of has a bounce back year. But you need more in that secondary. And I don't know if Caleb Farley's that guy. I love the corner of Virginia Tech. Injuries terrify me. New regime, too, at GM. So before we go, I want you to name your favorite NFL draft prospect. Is it one of the five we mentioned? Is there somebody else you want to go out and try to acquire uh, if you are Tennessee? Maybe you want a quarterback. We didn't put any on there because uh, you're not going to get Bryce Young or Stroud, and I don't want to spend my first-round pick on Will Levis or Richardson. Maybe you do. Let me know in the comments section, and make sure you're subbed. Free videos all off-season long right here on Tennessee Titans Today.